A reading from the first book of Kings. When Solomon was old, his wives had turned his heart to strange gods, and his heart was not entirely with the Lord his God, as the heart of his father David had been. By adoring Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the idol of the Ammonites, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not follow him unreservedly, as his father David had done. De Solomon then built a high place to Chemosh, the idol of Moab, and to Molech, the idol of the Ammonites, on the hill opposite Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. The Lord therefore became angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. For though the Lord had forbidden him this very act of following strange gods, Solomon had not obeyed him. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is what you want, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I enjoined on you, I will deprive you of the kingdom and give it to your servant. I will not do this during your lifetime, however, for the sake of your father David. It is your son whom I will deprive. Nor will I take away the whole kingdom. I will leave your son one tribe for the sake of my servant David and of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit us with your saving help. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. But they mingled with the nations and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare for them. Remember us, O Lord, as we favor your people. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons, and the Lord grew angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted to, no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Then he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, just in recent days, we were reflecting on the great wisdom of Solomon. That he asked not for long life or victory over his enemies, but for an understanding heart. And God granted it to him. God was pleased that he asked for this. The Queen of Sheba came to listen to his great wisdom. And today we see exactly the opposite of wisdom. He's not following the Lord. In fact, he's leading people in worship of false gods. He's setting up altars. It says he set up the high places. That is, altars on top of these hills to worship gods that don't exist. What happened? Well, brothers and sisters, you know, Solomon sought after wisdom. He thirsted for it. He longed for it. He valued it above all possessions. We have to foster that same desire within ourselves. We have to foster that awe, that sense of awe and wonder within ourselves. 
for the things of God. And here's the challenge of life, that as the years go on, we not lose that thirst, we not lose the awe. I often tell people the biggest temptation for priests is not to run off with some woman, it's to lose the sense of wonder and mystery about the sacred actions they do each day. So that as we come to celebrate Mass, for example, that it's not just, oh, it's another Mass, oh, it's the same old thing, and we get tired of the sacred and we lose our sense of awe and wonder or we lose our thirst for the presence of God, for the wisdom of God, for the Spirit of God, for the grace of God. Can't let that happen. Don't lose your enthusiasm, your thirst, your longing for the things of God. That, that's the first lesson that comes, comes out here. Because had Solomon not lost that thirst, God would have continued satisfying that thirst. But then we come to this, and it's reflected in our psalm here, Psalm 106, an historical psalm for Israel. We come to this uh, um, indication here in the reading from uh, 1 Kings 11, that he burned incense he and his wives, Solomon, sacrificed to these foreign gods. See, God had given these people the land, and he said, don't mingle with the nations around you, because they don't have the covenant. They don't know the true God. Don't follow their practices. Don't worship their gods, because their gods are naught, as the Word of God tells us. They are nothing. There is only one true God, the God of Israel. But Solomon went and sacrificed to their gods. And, 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 and listen to what it says here. He built a high place to Molech. Now, Molech and Baal and the Ashtaroth, these were all, these were a cluster of these pagan gods and goddesses to whom the nations around Israel sacrificed and Israel fell into this false worship. And the psalm today tells us what that false worship included. It says, They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. Child sacrifice. Killing of children. It's what we do today by abortion. The killing of children. The killing of the innocent there is a sin in and of itself. And then doing this in sacrifice to false gods, the added sin of idolatry and false worship. Now, in the book, let's go to a few places here in Scripture. In the book of Leviticus, in the 18th chapter, we read this. The Lord is giving his decrees uh, and his ways of, of, of life. Uh, for the people of the, of the covenant. And he says in Leviticus 18, 21, you shall not offer any of your offspring to be immolated to Molech, thus profaning the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord. There's an explicit prohibition here of a specific type of worship that involved child killing. Now Solomon was one of the, not, unfortunately not the only king, to set up these high places, these altars, to Molech. But in the worship of Molech, there would be these gigantic statues to this, this idol. And in the stomach of the, of the statue, it was an oven. And the people would literally take these babies and throw them into the, into the oven. And, 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 and they would be burned alive. Now, the place where this happened, the Valley of Ben-Hinnom, or Topheth, the words that describe this location for these high places, Topheth, the word signifies both burn and also drum. Because as the children were taken into this oven, of course, they were screeching and screaming, and that's also what Hinnom indicates a meaning of that word, shrieking and moaning. But the drum, what's the significance of the drum? If you see early artistic depictions of this scene, 
of this idol worship where people are gathered around this gigantic statue which is an oven and babies are being thrown into it, you see on the ground near the, near the idol priests beating on drums. The sound of the drums drowning out the sound of the children shrieking. This was such an abomination to God that we read in the second book of Kings, we read today from the first book of Kings, but then if you go to the second book of Kings, it talks about the exile. Now, there was the exile of the northern kingdoms, uh, the, the ten tribes that Assyrians came in and took them away. And then later there was the uh, exile of the southern kingdom. The Babylonians came in, and that's when they attacked Jerusalem and the temple, and Jeremiah talks all about this in the book of Lamentations also. Let's go to 2 Kings. Because uh, the uh, reasons for these, well, we read also in today's psalm, they, sa they sacrificed their sons and daughters to the demons, and then what happened was the exile. God's punishment came. Uh, in 2 Kings 17, it's very explicit. Starting, Let's start with verse 16. It's talking about what the people did there in Israel. They disregarded all the commands of the Lord, their God. They made themselves two molten calves, they also made a sacred pole and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Now, as I said, there was Baal. There's this cluster of different gods. Baal, the Ash Ashtaroth, and then there was this um, Molech that is mentioned today uh, in the context of Solomon. It all involved this child sacrifice. And so the, the words of 2 Kings 17 continue. They immolated their sons and daughters by fire, practiced fortune-telling and divination, and sold themselves into evil doing in the Lord's sight, provoking him, until in his great anger against Israel, the Lord put them away out of his sight. Now, that was the exile. In the psalm today, it goes on to say, they sacrificed their sons and daughters to demons, and then it says, and the Lord grew angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. Get away from me, the Lord says. It echoes what you read in Isaiah chapter 1 where he says, Your hands are full of blood, and because your hands are full of blood, I will not listen to your prayers. Now, 2 Kings 17 is talking about the first exile of the, of the northern kingdom, but then we can go to 2 Kings 24 where it talks about the reason for the exile in the southern kingdom. And right at the beginning... This is the Babylonians now, some time later, and right at the beginning of the chapter it says, The Lord loosed against him, the king, the, ba the bands of Chaldeans, Arameans, Moabites, and Ammonites. He loosed them against Judah, the southern kingdom, to destroy it, as the Lord had threatened through his servants the prophets, like Jeremiah. Now, verse 3, This befell Jerusalem. This befell Judah. Because the Lord had stated that he would inexorably put them out of his sight for the sins Manasseh had committed in all that he did, verse 4, and especially because of the innocent blood he shed with which he filled Jerusalem, and the Lord would not forgive. Let's go to a couple of other passages. Um, future king, you know, the, the history of the kings is like a back and forth when you read through the books of the kings. You see some kings are reform kings, reinstituting the covenant, urging the people to faithfulness to the Lord, and others are actually leading them in sin and rebellion to the covenant. And if you go to 2 Kings 23... In verse 10, uh, we read about the, uh, uh, well, in this chapter, we're reading about the, um, uh, the reform and uh, King Josiah. And it says in verse 10, he did away, he defiled Topheth in the valley of Ben-Hinnom. Okay, so again, a place where the, ba the children were being burned. So that there would no longer be any immolation of sons, or daughters by fire in honor 
of Molech. So this was a reform, a repentance, if you will, a national repentance from this sin. And then, of course, in Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah, one more passage uh, in chapter 32, and we read in verse uh, 35. Okay. Let's go back to, to, to um, verse 33. They turned their backs to me. God is talking about the rebellion of his people. Not their faces. Though I kept teaching them, they would not listen to my correction. They defiled the house named after me by the horrid idols they set up in it. They built high places to Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and immolated their sons and daughters to Molech bringing sin upon Judah, this I never commanded them, nor did it even enter my mind that they should practice such abominations. So the, the scripture, brothers and sisters, is clear about the condemnation of the killing of these babies. It's filled with the condemnation of innocent blood, and it is filled with teaching about the consequences of doing that. Now, God has not changed. We know that he has brought the power of a better blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. We know forgiveness in the blood of Christ, but that doesn't take away the horror of child sacrifice. And brothers and sisters, let's say it again. We are witnessing in our day, down the street from where many of us live, within driving distance of where many of us live each day, where many of us worship each day, child sacrifice that destroyed the kingdom of Judah, that destroyed the kingdom of Israel, that made God turn his hand away and abhor his, his, his inheritance, is being sacrificed today. And people in government like Joe Biden, who are calling themselves worshipers of God, and Nancy Pelosi, are setting up the high places. They're not doing anything better than what these uh, what Manasseh and Solomon, when he turned away from the Lord, did when they set up these altars to the false gods. They are doing no better than they did in the sight of the Lord. This is truly an abomination to God and is dangerous for us. In the Old Testament, it brought about the exile. It destroys a nation. Brothers and sisters, let's use these readings today as a, as a warning. Let's use them as an inspiration to us who day by day are fighting against child sacrifice, which is abortion. Let us use these readings as an impetus to get on our knees before the Lord and say, God, deliver us from this culture of death. Deliver us now and show us what we must do to hasten the day when the practice of child sacrifice in these abortion clinics will end. Bring us, Lord. Bring us by the power of the blood of Christ. Bring us to your kingdom of life. Amen.